Hey guys, Adam in the AeroWorks workshop, and man, does it feel good to finally get this thing on the gear. I know we've been talking about it for a long time, several episodes, in fact. Ran into some issues, we're gonna go into that here in just a minute, but it, it definitely feels good to get this thing up on the gear, and man, does this thing sit high off the ground. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things we've done to get to this point today in the build. Well, I know they call the regular 750 stole the Sky Jeep, but man, look at the clearance on this sucker. This thing has almost 33 inches of clearance from the ground with these big tires on here. These are 27 and a half inch Tundra tires uh, made by Aero Classics to their Tundra tubeless tire. But yeah, look at the clearance on this thing. This thing truly is a stole aircraft. So let's take a closer look up at the uh, gear and strut bracket all installed. Of course, we got the AN hardware here. Got your A6 rivets here. The first two you're able to get to from the outside, so of course you can uh, squeeze them from the outside. The remaining three you have to do from the inside. I kind of thought that looked a little cheesy, but by the time you get the struts on here, that's gonna be hidden with these brackets here, so I didn't worry too much about it. I could always touch them up, paint them black if I wanted to. Got the, uh, the bracket, the gear uh, strut, and the gear strut. Um, Angle here, all powder coated in a high gloss black to go with the paint scheme that we're gonna go with that we'll be revealing down the road a little ways. Here's that big Airhawk tire up front. Uh, we've got a little bit of a spacing issue. Uh, I talked to Roger a little bit about it today. Um, you have a 71 and an 81 millimeter spacer that's inside of here depending on the back spacing of your wheel. But even with that in there, we've got a little bit of rubbing with these big tires in there. So I may look at extending those spacers just a couple of millimeters kind of make that fork widen up just a tad uh, to give us more clearance because right now the tire under certain circumstances will just barely rub on the inside and we don't want that going on so we'll be working on tweaking that a little bit this lower support bearing and lower support here uh, I don't care what anybody tells you I'm gonna use an industry term here but these things are a mofo to put on if I'm telling you uh, between having the pucks at the right tension trying to slip this in, wedging it in the back here, trying to get bolt holes lined up, getting your threads lined up. This required uh, a, a good sized mallet to get everything to fit correctly. Um, it's kind of a combination of trying to slip it in up in the top, slide it over the top, put these around. I mean, it's just like you're doing five things at once. So when you get to this, if you do have any difficulties, shoot me an email or leave a comment on this uh, video and I'll go ahead and do my best and give you some tips that I ran into uh, and things that I came up with getting it on there. All right, let's go ahead and jump back to where we started to prep the lower main nose gear bearing. And one of the things you have to do is you have to drill and tap the bottom of this nylon material for these AN hardware bolts. And uh, out of the box, they're not drilled. So the first thing you have to do is set it up on the lower bearing support shelf, drill some pilot holes, and then get the appropriate uh, drill bit and tap set and get ready to mark and drill up your uh, block. But the first thing I wanted to do is measure that hardware, measure the threads, and then actually uh, put a mark on my drill bit so that I only went in that deep, plus or minus a little bit of extra for the threads. That way I didn't drill through or drill too deep. Um, one thing I would recommend in this procedure is go ahead and drill a few extra millimeters the last thing you want to do is get to where you don't drill quite far enough, you tap the hole, and then your bolt doesn't go in all the way. You can't really go back and drill it again. So make sure you leave plenty of uh, space to tap those threads. You can see I put the masking tape on here to kind of uh, indicate how deep I need to push that drill bit in. And then, of course, I'm going to be tapping that, which we're going to see here in just a minute. Drilling the block was pretty straightforward once I had the pilot holes in. I simply clamped it down in my drill press. You'll notice those uh, composite shims on the right side because the uh, block itself is not completely flat. It's a little higher on one side, so you want to make sure you have that level and then go ahead and do your drilling. Now, I had read somewhere that somebody had used the drill bit to start the tap, but I went ahead and completed the whole thing just by keeping some down pressure on the turn handle there and turning that in. I was able to tap this pretty easily. All right, guys, I just pulled the uh, lower support beam off or bracket off after drilling those holes. I mean, this is why you want to separate those pieces. You can see all the shavings in there. So if I wouldn't have separated these pieces out, that would all be in between there. So that's why it's important whenever you're back drilling or double drilling that we uh, 
take these pieces back off and uh, deburr out these holes both sides before we put it back together and then back on the airplane. All right, guys, so I've got the prepped nose gear on the table here and I am getting that lower bushing installed so that we can set that on the shelf. This is one of those things the instructions isn't super clear on. So we're gonna just barely snug this guy up because we want a little bit of play, but we don't want it to come apart. So right about there, that's all. We've got lots of play. This is basically gonna sit there when we go to put it on the shelf. Got our holes drilled, they're tapped, holes are cleaned up, ready to install. All right, a couple episodes back, I ended the uh, episode and said I ran into a couple difficulties. This is my son and I finishing up the elevator. You'll see here in just a second where we had that doubler skin on the bottom there. Uh, may have been the top, actually it was the top, where when I bent it around, you can see my son holding it up there. I actually put that doubler on too early. Luckily, I hadn't put all the rivets in, so it was easy enough to use a little shim there get the skin folded under there, and then we were able to finish that up and get this elevator completed. Well, I appreciate you watching the video today. Hopefully you'll like and subscribe to the video series down below. Leave a comment down below. Let me know where you guys are from, maybe what you're building or what you want to build. I'd love to see it, love to read it. I do respond to every comment down below, so I'd like to hear from uh, the viewers on uh, what we're doing well on the channel, what you'd like to see more of. I hope everybody has a happy and safe holidays and we'll see you on the next video.